conversation. Yeah, morning. Everybody is talking about the upper Bini and what he said he, when he visited the Lagos State Governor that Bini is founded Lagos. What's your take on that? Yeah, Bini is founded Lagos. Yeah, Bini. Lagos was, uh, you know, British protectorate. When the Oba that is in charge of Lagos was a Bini man. And they, not only that, currently, the bite of Bini, the Nigerian International Waters presently is under Bini Kingdom. Now, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about from where Bite of Bonnie started after Bite of Biafra and Guinea. Bini was in control of this part of the world. From here to Badagri, it's under Bini. And when Lagos was founded in 1967, it was still under Bini, in control of Bini. Oba Kosoko, Oba Nkra, Oba Kra, and the rest of the whole Oba in Lagos here, yeah, they are all ancestrally Bini, Bini Nuance. I mean Bini Kingdom in Nigeria. So when if Oba or Bini says that Lagos is founded by the Binis, he is right, 100% right. 100%. Yoruba, you know, Omachabe, the Bini, Bini people, Binis, as a result of their population, and their double standardness. They are not people that are straightforward. They parley with the Benin. They traded here. This place is their own meeting center trade wise in the 18th, 17th centuries from 16, even during the time of slave trade. It was recently that the Eko people, the Awaris, you know, the, the, the overwhelmingly outsmarted the Benin and they have taken over here politically. Bini man is the owner of Lagos, historically. And I stand by history because history is it. What is happening, con happening currently is Yoruba is using politics and they use it in the past to suppress the Bini. And they have taken over here. Bini doesn't have to say again, but I want to try you. Go and meet Aki Oba Akinolu Abi Akinolu, the current Oba of Lagos. I ask him where he comes from. You will know that I'm not just here to talk nonsense. But to make sense, some Yoruba monarchs disagreed with the Oba. And they will because the Oba, the monarchs in Yoruba land, they are shadow monarchs. They are shallow minded monarchs who are not even following the deep, deep tradition of Oba chief. Because an Oba is not supposed to be telling lies, an Oba is not supposed to be double standard and be playing politics. An Oba is supposed to be away outside what is called political, whatever that concerns politics. Oba shouldn't involve himself on politics. So the kind of current Oba you have in Yoruba land are shallow-minded Obas who are not tradition inclined. Mm. They would rather accept money and, and abandon what is African. I didn't understand and go to the other side of it. See, if you're, if you're a scammer, if you're a crook, if you are a thief, if you are illicentious, you shouldn't near that others too. But this time around, governors, local government chairman, president, they can install Oba and remove Oba, which to me is an what abomination. It is on Africa. I'm an Igbo man. Oba chief, king chief, as in Igbo land is hereditary. Yeah, it's of you know what we inherit. You don't contest it with your money. You don't contest it with your political ability. You don't contest it because you have all the political structures in the southeast. No. There are people that were chosen to be the ogre, oba, uh, kings, essence in Igbo land. Like me, I cite myself as an example. I am from Nando. The essence making community in my town is Abudu people, they are the Abudu. Abudu people are in Obunika as well. Obunika is the first son of Igwedu. Abudu there, Abudu Nando, they are the others. That family, Ifa Choibu, that's the only family from where kings are enthroned in Nando community. Okay, I hope uh, we have uh, our history back to our schools so that we can learn some of these things. Obasan just uh, abolished history uh, when he's, uh, he was president. Yes, he was a president and the uh, the, the Fulani hegemony that bought him and put him inside their pockets as handkerchief. They ravage his brain. They brainwash him. They, they psych him. 
the new then 1976 1999 2007 court of wanted and they gave it to him that's why he deviated from following history even strike struck history out of our curriculum educational curriculum or academic curriculum because the hegemony they know they play politics more than anybody in west africa they know what you want they give it to you they overshadow you they come and mount on you and suppress you then they will start what loading it over you they will start killing you they will start cheating you they are the highest beneficiaries on the continent of Africa. When you talk about politics, before and this are there. Are you listening to me? About Sanjo, cheapishly, you know, fizzled out. That's why he succumbed to that kind of idea or ideology. Why must you strike history out of educational curriculum? History is very, very important. If you don't remember the past, you can't carry on with the present. With the present. With the present, it is the history that tells us much more about much much about the present. The present can't exist without the past, and the history has to do with previous records, archives of what happened in the past. If not that we fought First World War 1914 to 1918, Second World War 1913 to 1945, don't you know that we would have fought Third World War? Which all, almost, you know, uh, uh, played out in early ninety Gulf War. They managed it and managed it. Gulf War did not escalate uh, escalate into Third World War. That's why history is very important. But some people just choke history, wave it aside, thinking it's nothing. The history told us how Ottoman Napoleon coming came into Nigeria. Suppress the Alsace, mounted on the Alsace, control the Alsace. The Alsace allowed Fulani, Fulani spoke Alsa, Fulani Alsa now. Allow them to be part of them. They even love them more than other mid belters Kaduna, Kanu State, Bochi, Kanu State. They love Fulani more than the Southern Nigerians. Because Fulani know what they need and they play that, that politics so professionally that the whole houses are under Fulani today. And Fulani are not up to 10 million in Nigeria. The houses are heading to that 7, that 9 million. While Fulani that is not up to 10 million is controlling the whole Nigeria. I didn't understand. But had it been we are reading history, houses would have known that the Fulanis we are talking about are from Senegal, Gambia, Mali. Senegambia, Futa, Jello Highland, that's where they migrated from. And today they are in control of Nigeria. And even we allow history in our academic curriculum, we would have known that Fulanis are strangers in Nigeria. And they are still the one calling us slaves today. It is an abomination. You can never stay in your house, a stranger visit you and call you a slave in your house. It means your brain is too tiny. Nigerian ethnicities, North, Mid Belt, and the Southern Nigeria, the whole ethnicities in Nigeria, except Fulani, they have small brains. Fulani have smarted everybody, have smarted Yoruba from the axis of Lorraine, and then throw Emirates there. You have any of Lorraine today. Yoruba is not in control of other states. That's how small their brain is before Fulani brain. Fulani has the bigger brain. Even amongst the Igbos. Even among the Igbos, somebody like Kaho Puzodim and the rest of all those political uh, bygones in Igbo land. After this, Fulani manipulated their brain. Among the Igbos, among everybody. I didn't understand. The Echans, the Benis, everybody's looking up to Fulani. Each man will never believe Igbo man. Vini man will never believe Yoruba man. Yoruba man like Tinubu will never value an Igbo man. Tinubu wants his money and Fulani is paying him more. That's why he doesn't know what to do currently. That resource control is important. That restructuring Nigeria is important. Restructuring Nigeria is very, very important. Let everybody manage his resources. Tinubu is there now enjoying himself. He has forgotten. So that the next time Fulani will come, Fulani will not on Nigerians again and make sure that they succeed on cattle colony and uh, Ruga. Rugalization of Nigeria. Water resources. Water resources. If they took over our waters, it is gone. It is gone. 
in Fulani, if Nigeria control, Nigeria government control our waterways, water channels, it is done. Fulani will live everywhere in Nigeria, control every community in Nigeria, and they start their henchmen terrorism across the country. And it has it was encroaching so bad during Buhari regime that even the international communities could come out with this rank. So what happened is that other tribes in Nigeria, they have never realized who they are. We are the one doing ourselves. If you want to come out from it, I find it fair the elders, Yoruba elders should call Tinubu to order to do the need for now before it is late. Tinubu doesn't respect human life because of the Flanese hegemonies. He's learning from his masters, the Flanese. Okay, let's look at the CJ has said that emotion nor any mob action will not stop them from that that CJ and Ariwola, if you look at him, he resemble monkey in shape. His white beard, his height, his white stockings, the shorts he used to put up. See, he was putting on shorts so that people will, will be likening him to the categories of Wole Chinkas, Tai Solare. Ariwola is not an erudite lawyer in the southwest there were many that many that were there before him are more competent than he Adewola could not see himself as a luminary you know giant because somebody like Wole Choenka Tai Solare Tai Solare has proved himself to the whole world that actually he studied communism he lived and spent all his life in Russia and he was an out upright man Adewola went to France and dialogue with Tinubu on how he will surely make sure that he judged against Obi and the other, you know, cronies on presidential election of 2023. Ariola is the one that put us in this mess. Ariola shouldn't be talking nonsense. What he said is entitled to his devilish opinion. To us, all of us that are well read in Nigeria, everywhere meaning Nigeria, Ariola is a bushman, a man that should be dragged back to the dark ages when the whole world was in darkness. Ariola is not an educated man. An educated man will never be happy with what is happening currently in Nigeria. An educated man will never ever be happy. Ariola has something in his brain that is not working right. Psychophancy of the highest order. His brain is interwoven with nonsense, all manner of abnormalities. That's why he's coming still to talk, to say nonsense. When he outrightly knows that it is the judges across Nigeria that is selecting for Nigerians. Selectocracy. They have drifted Nigeria into selectocracy, not democracy. Ariwola should go and sit down and chop up, close his dirty mouth, acid food mouth. It shouldn't be saying all this manner of nonsense. Social media has gone wide. Social media has gone nuclear. Everybody is still listening to this man talking nonsense. Nigeria International Image is in a chamber. They have rewritten Nigerian international narratives. We are no more in existence if you don't know. Okay. Thank you very much.